My guest began seeing visions as a child, and later he saw the last days of planet Earth. Next, on this edition of It's Supernatural. Centuries have come and gone, offering wisdom and understanding throughout the ages. Today, there should be nothing beyond one's power to discover. And yet, the strange, unusual, and mysterious world of the supernatural defies understanding. Stay tuned for a unique and powerful investigation into a curious, undiscovered universe only on It's Supernatural. Hello, I'm Sid Roth, your investigative reporter, and I'm so looking forward to this show today. As my producer, Janie, tells me that she checked out this man with a number of her friends, and he has given them the most precise words that have come to pass. Ken Peters, let's go back. Even as a child, all of a sudden, visions started coming to you. Tell me the first one you can remember. The first one was, uh, I was about eight years old, I believe, um, doing um, a religious ceremony in our church. And uh, it was you, called... You were Catholic. I was Catholic, yes, Roman Catholic. And uh, the ceremony was called the Stations of the Cross. And we would pray the rosary over each station. And the stations were uh, a mosaic picture of the week of passion of Jesus. And I don't remember exactly which one it was, but as we were praying, I looked up and the tile mosaic picture became um, like a television uh, picture in front of my eyes, a movie. And Jesus was carrying the cross. It was at the point where uh, he fell down with the cross and uh, Simon was called to carry the cross. So that's how it what began. What effect did it have on you when you saw this? Oh, numerous. Uh, I mean, what, what, was it sort of like um, it was really happening in front of you, or was it just a television screen type of thing? Or It was very real. Uh, I had never experienced anything like that, so it was uh, very strange at first, but very real. It seemed as though I was almost there watching that happen before my eyes. Um, difficult to explain, but yet uh, it seemed very, very real. Uh, the pain that he was going through, the crowd, the chaos, it was, it was uh, frightening. I was but, just a young boy. Well, what effect did it have on your life? <laughs> it just about made me go crazy. Uh, you know, I, I never had heard of anything like that happening to anyone. Did you tell people? Yes, I did. And what reaction did they have? Uh, they thought the same of me. They thought I was uh, off my rocker. You know, they thought I had lost it so much uh, as to see something like that. And you actually prayed that God would take this away from you. Yes. Why? Uh, the visions and the things that I began to see were, were wonderful. They were, um, they were encouraging, but yet at the same time, these kinds of things weren't happening to my friends. And uh, unusual things would happen to me. I might be uh, at church and start crying, and uh, I'd start seeing a vision or something. And Why would you cry? I really don't know. I just felt uh, God's power or God's presence or something, mm. you know. At the time, I didn't know how to d describe it. I didn't really know what was happening. So peer pressure, you know, the pressure of my friends, uh, family members kind of, you know, looking upon me strangely. So I, I wanted it to stop. And then at age 21, something even stranger than that happened. Tell me about it. Well, uh, I had uh, went to sleep at night and uh, began to have a dream. Uh, Sid, I don't normally remember my dreams. I'm sure I have dreams mm -hmm. probably like you do, but I don't normally remember them. Or if you do, you remember maybe just a little Bits sketchy. And pieces, yes. Yeah. This dream uh, started, uh, I was able to understand the starting point, the time it went through, and the ending point. Um, it was a dream about uh, the, pretty much the end of the earth that I could understand at the time. Uh, halfway through the dream, I woke up frightened, terribly frightened, and uh, just in a, a literal pool of perspiration in the bed. Did you tell your wife about it? Yes, I did, and <laughs> she said I was having a nightmare. Well, you were, uh, from what you told me. <laughs> it was very frightening. Uh, I woke up, and I wasn't quite sure really what to do. Um, I was quite a rebellious person at that point in my life. Um, so 
praying, uh, doing something like that. Uh, it wasn't one of my practices. But when I got up and began to pace the living room floor, I really felt a strong sense that I needed to read the Bible. Well, I, I didn't read the Bible. But I thought you were a practicing Catholic. Well, I, I was, but uh, I didn't read the Bible. You know. Okay, so <laughs> you, you had a Bible at least. Uh, well, I actually, in the, uh, it was about 3.30, 4 o'clock in the morning, I went out to my garage and began to look through all the books that I had in boxes, and I found a Bible and ended up bringing it into the house, sat down in a rocking chair, and uh, part of my habit is to always flip from a magazine from the back. Mm -hmm. And so I flipped to the back of the Bible and uh, started at a portion called the Apocalypse. And I thought, well, I'll, I'll read this. I mean, I don't know what this means. Never had read it. Began to read um, maybe three, four, five chapters. I, is this like the book of Revelation? Book of Revelation. Okay. Uh, it didn't say that in my Bible, though. You okay. Know? Uh, so that was pretty foreign to me. It but, didn't say it in my Bible either. I come from the Jewish background, <laughs> but that's okay. <laughs> uh, well, I wasn't quite sure what it was. You know, I really wasn't sure what apocalypse even meant. Uh, but after a brief time of reading, uh, I fell back asleep. I fell asleep in the chair, and the dream started exactly at the point it stopped. Hmm. Uh, it was astounding that what I had saw, what frightened me to wake me up was a, a very wicked uh, being at the front door of my house where my door locks had been changed. Someone had taken the door sets, you know, your lock and mm -hmm. your, your doorknob off the door, and I kept hearing something inside of me tell me, don't go back to your house, but flee. And uh, there was much chaos going on during this dream. The dream seemed to take about maybe three or four years, you know, to transpire over time, to, mm -hmm. to guess at it. And it seemed as though at this point, maybe a, a year or so had transpired in the dream. And so when I went to the door, there was this uh, uh, very frightening figure. I don't know what it was. It looked uh, like a human. It was very uh, dark, uh, sinister looking, very frightening. And so I slammed the door shut, and that's when I woke up. Well, when I fell back asleep in the chair, the dream started at that exact point. And so I ran, I fled. And uh, from that point, uh, I met an individual who began to tell me about Jesus. And, uh, you know, he began to tell me what had been going on because there was chaos. Uh, the police were no longer uh, the law enforcement officers, but it was more like a military. Uh, I saw some uh, military vehicles that recently I've seen now that I didn't know were in existence that now are. You saw them in your dream. And they didn't the even dream. exist at that time. Exactly. Saw them in the dream, didn't mm -hmm. exist. Uh, at least to, to my knowing, I had never saw them in any, mm -hmm. you know, pictures or anything. Um, so what had happened is this man uh, began to express to me uh, the plan for uh, a person to be uh, converted to, to faith in Christ. And uh, so I agreed with him. And then he began to expound to me what was going on uh, in the world because it was... Uh, almost undescribable, the chaos. Uh, well, hold that thought. We're going to be back in a moment. We're going to find out exactly what we saw for the last days of the world. Don't go away. Be right back. Hello YouTube, Mishpocha. Mishpocha is a Hebrew word, it means family. This is Sid Roth. Welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. If you've been blessed by this show, please subscribe. Then click the bell so you won't miss a single episode of It's Supernatural. Hi, Sid Roth, your investigative reporter. I know you came back because Ken Peters, he had a dream knew nothing about the Bible, but in this dream he saw the last days of the world. And he saw vehicles that didn't even exist back then. It's just recently that these have come on the scene. But there was chaos going on, you said. Mm -hmm. Tell me, pick up from there. The chaos, uh, again, there was no governmental uh, covering, so to speak. There didn't seem to be uh, that security that we sense, uh, you know, with uh, uh, 
with our government watching over us, you know, the, the parameters that they provide for us. That was completely removed. Uh, again, there weren't local law enforcement agencies, but it was more of a, a kind of a military or militia. It seemed like martial law. Hmm. Uh, people were greatly frightened. One thing I remember that I will never forget was um, that little babies had just uh, disappeared for a period of time in this dream. They were gone. No, no little babies from, you know, newborn. Where did to, they go? Where did all the babies go? They just disappeared. Uh, they were just okay. gone. Yeah, they huh. had just disappeared. Many, many mothers were very frightened. A lot of toddlers had disappeared. Uh, and then a uh, period of time into the dream, uh, it, it, people began to have children again. And I knew that this was the end, even though I didn't know anything about the end. Inside of me, I knew this was the end. The end was at the door. Hmm. Uh, began to see buildings, uh, buildings in the city that I was a part of at that time where I lived. Uh, that are now there, triangular glass building, um, the, 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 the way the monetary structure was set up, uh, only certain people could make uh, transactions, business transactions, um, that people uh, had to have a mark on their hand to, to conduct business, to buy food at, at grocery stores. It was all controlled. You never read this in the Bible? Never. You know, this is in the Bible? Never. Okay, go ahead. Now, uh, this was very strange because people um, people were controlled, literally. That's what it mm -hmm. was. They were controlled. And there was a, a great sense that uh, they were being watched almost, you know. So uh, what had happened was, again, like I said, uh, this man led me to faith in Jesus. And I began to work with him to try to spread this news to others. And the thing that uh, really impressed into my thinking was that he said that that the Christian people, those who had faith in Jesus, any who had faith in Jesus, were taken, and they were taken to heaven. And that uh, was such an empty feeling to me. Was that where the babies went? Uh, I assume so, Sid. So, I, I believe so. Okay, go I ahead. do believe so. So uh, the words that he said were so real to me um, that I received them. I really embraced them as truth, and I, I knew inside of me somehow that these were truth. So you were left. You were left, left there with, in this chaos. Yes. What else went on? Uh, well, after a short period of time, we began to kind of help uh, uh, these children. Many children were abandoned. Much, uh, much fear was working through people's hearts. A lot of people were abandoning their children. Uh, people were committing suicide on a regular basis. It was very frightening times. So we began to try to help people that were in uh, desperate straits. And eventually we were uh, captured by the uh, militia and we were told to stop hmm. doing what we were doing. And uh, at that point, uh, we, we continued to do it. Then they took us in again and interrogated us and told us that if we didn't stop, there would be severe penalties. They never at first were very clear about what the penalties would be other than they would just be severe. And uh, at that time, we just continued to say, well, this is what we believe God has called us to do, and we can't stop doing this. The one thing that seemed strange was I didn't notice any religious freedoms uh, for any people groups, none. Eventually, they uh, took us into this room, did further interrogation, and uh, we pretty much decided we were not going to follow uh, the directives that they were giving us. And then they finally led us into this huge corridor uh, in this building. It seemed to be 50, maybe 100 yards long with all these people lined up. We weren't sure what was going on, but they would take a person uh, every few minutes and they would go into this room. And then the, the line would start getting closer and closer. Eventually, we realized that they were uh, executing these people in this line. The door had opened You enough. were in the line? I was in the line, yes. My goodness, how would you like to have been in that line? How would you like to have been? What would you have done? Well, you sure would have prayed a lot, I imagine. I'd like to go right now to our control room. I'd like to talk to Janie and find out what we'll be doing next week on It's Supernatural. So when we go there, you're going to find out that next week is going to be a very, very special segment. What Ken is talking about right now, we're going to find out it actually, it actually happened. Not all of it, but some of it has already 
happen. Janie, what about next week? Ken is going to be back next week, and he had the most incredible thing happen to him. He found himself in one second in Rio de Janeiro, without taking a plane, without taking a car. All of a sudden, he just was there, from one place to another place. Well, that's my kind of travel. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Then you don't have to pay for an airplane anymore. No frequent flyer miles, either. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. And But he has been so accurate with prophecies. I mean, he's... He's known things before they've happened. He knew about the L.A. riots before they happened. He knew about an earthquake in, in Japan before it happened. And he knows something that's going to happen in America by the year 2003. And it's going to come to pass. Hi, Sid Roth, the investigative reporter. We left off with Ken Peters and he was having a dream, knew nothing about the Bible. And in this dream, he's in a line, and he's headed towards, was it execution? execution. You knew it. Yes. Well, what had happened after many people had progressed through the line is that the door was left open. I don't know why, but uh, the door was left open, and we began to see what was going on. Uh, the gentleman I had talked about and I, and uh, we were in this line proceeding forward, and uh, began to see people uh, being beheaded, literally uh, losing their lives. And uh, great fear came on me uh, when I saw that happening, because I, I, I wasn't sure what was going on well, behind that door. Listen, <laughs> something be wrong with you if great fear didn't come on you. Oh, Sid, it, the fear was indescribable. It felt like my body was uh, having the extreme chills and, uh, you know, uh, almost beside myself. And I began to... Uh, be afraid that I would uh, deny my faith in Jesus, that I wouldn't be able to go through with this. I was petrified, literally. And uh, I began to just cry out. Uh, I can't tell you that I began to pray. It was more of a crying out in desperation because, uh, you know, I was fearful that if I denied uh, Jesus, then what would, what would happen to me, you know? To me, it was more real than the death itself. Mm -hmm. You know, I was more frightened of, of the denial, you know? So I cried out, and I just basically said, uh, Lord, please help me. That was a real simple prayer. But uh, at that moment... Not a classic prayer, but an <laughs> honest prayer. <laughs> yeah. Honest from the heart. Right. <laughs> so as soon as I said that, Sid, I, I felt someone touch my shoulder, and I, I looked back behind me, because when my shoulder was touched, uh, I just felt warmth go through my whole body. Again, I had... I was almost, you know, my teeth were almost chattering because of the, I, I was chilled almost with this fear, great fear. And when I had the warmth run through me, I looked back about like this, and it was Jesus standing behind me. And, you know, a million thoughts could run through your mind if you could explain them in a matter of milliseconds, but I couldn't, except that great peace just flooded me. And then he spoke to me, looked right into my eyes, spoke to me and said, Fear not, for death will never hold you. And uh, be known to me what those words meant. I, I was coming up to experience death. And just a few moments later, the individual that was ahead of me uh, was executed, and then it was my turn. And, and uh, they asked me, uh, it was strange, because they could tell the people that were going to crack. They could tell, and there were some that left the line, you know. What do you mean by crack? Uh, just deny uh, the Lord? Deny, yes, deny the Lord, yes. And so uh, I think they had noticed that in me previously in the line. And so they asked me again, and I said, no, um, Jesus is Lord, and uh, I can't deny faith in him. And uh, so the executioner, uh, you know, they put me uh, uh, in the position to be killed. And as soon as the, it was a sword, as soon as the sword touched my neck, I mean, the moment it touched me, I was gone. And there I was with the Lord looking upon the whole scene. Uh, it was phenomenal. I mean, instantly in his presence, away from what I was experiencing in death and uh, witnessing all of it, immediately at that point, the executioner took off his mask and said, I, I will not kill any more of these people. And then did you wake up? And then I woke up. How did you feel? <laughs> I, uh, very confused, uh, very... Uh, um, besides myself, really. I can't. Now, now, now you, you knew religion, you went to parochial school, but you, you told me you really didn't know Jesus at no, the time I mean, of the dream. No, I didn't. I mean, I, I knew about God. I knew about Jesus. Uh, you know, I went to church every 
Sunday and, and saw a cross in the church and, and uh, the whole uh, religious uh, part that I was a part of, but didn't have a, uh, a relationship with God uh, as, a, as like you and I would have or something. You know what I mean? So it was foreign to me. It wasn't something I could perceive. So what happened next? Uh, I went uh, and wrote everything down that I could remember. It was so vivid. It was in Technicolor, literally. So I wrote it down, and I worked with a Christian man. He was uh, one of the finest men I'd ever met, and I, I, I just uh, literally, uh, I, I harassed the man daily, but I knew that he was a genuine... Uh, Why did you harass him? Um, probably just because I was a very honorary individual. Uh, he was, uh, he just, uh, he was filled with love, literally. I would harass mm. him, and he would never respond in anger. Ken, how do you know that dream was true? Uh, I believe it was true because of the things that I couldn't have known about beforehand that have happened now. Um, things that weren't in existence that are now in existence. The way uh, one thing I saw was a, a scanner for hands in grocery stores mm -hmm. and in, in retail centers. And uh, uh, recently, I was even in a retail center where the exact uh, scanner I saw it showed a hand uh, with a with a uh, like a beam coming off this and I asked the lady at the counter I said well what's that for and she says well eventually they're talking about uh, putting some type of uh, uh, implant so that all people have to do is just put their hand through here to have their transactions done so there's no need for checks and credit cards and money and so I had seen these things um, before they were in place now you said that something caused you to want to read the Bible. Mm -hmm. Tell me about that. Uh, you know, Sid, at the time, I didn't know that God would speak to people uh, on a personal level. My perception of him was he was far away, uh, you know, he was out in the universe somewhere and he was way too busy. And uh, I've come to know through the years and realize at that moment that God was speaking to me. So when I took this dream to this individual, he began to tell me that God is trying to speak to you. And he's the one who told me these things that you have shared with me are right out of the Bible. And so he asked me also, he said, have you read this? I said, no, I, I read a few chapters uh, halfway through this dream, but, uh, you know, without any understanding of what they were, the scriptures made no sense to me. You know, I, I wasn't enlightened to understand them. Uh, you know, I was just reading because I knew at that moment that's what I needed mm -hmm. to do, you know. I think it might have been my religious background, you know. Uh, I was trying to find God, but I think it was kind of on my terms, so to speak. What happened next? Well, uh, he began to tell me that I needed to be saved from my sins, and uh, I, I didn't like that. I did not want to hear that. Uh, I enjoyed my lifestyle. Uh, so I asked him, do, do I need to become like you? Because I didn't know what it meant to be saved from my sins. I, I wasn't quite sure of that. Uh, I had an understanding of, of, of what happened to a person when they die. Uh, I believed that, you know, if you were okay, you'd go to purgatory. Uh, if you were real terrible, like a murderer, you know, you might go straight to hell. But uh, so I didn't understand that concept. So he said, uh, you need to accept Jesus as Savior and Lord. And so I said, well, do I have to be like you? Because I, I really wasn't ready to give up. Uh, you didn't want to become like him? No. No, not really. So uh, what happened was uh, I, I said, well, uh, do I have to quit doing the things I'm doing? And he said, well, kind of yes, kind of no. And I didn't understand what he meant by that. What do you mean kind of yes, kind of no? He said, well, you, you need to do what God tells you and what his word tells you to do, not what I would tell you or people. So shortly thereafter, um, about a two or three week period went by and uh, my very best friend had just recently um, come to faith in Jesus Christ with, uh, uh, with a kind of an unusual happenstance with him also. He had visited me and uh, talked to me about that and it was very strange to me, but I, I knew I could trust him. I've known him since first grade, you know, it's just a young mm -hmm. boy. So uh, he invited me uh, to a church service and uh, so I went to this church service. It was very unusual in my perception. Listen, it was so unusual in his perception Something happened that normally doesn't happen. The pastor knew things that were going on inside of Ken, and he had no way of knowing it. And then 
this gift started getting refined and he began to know things about the future. So next week, he's going to be coming on It's Supernatural. And I believe he's going to tell you some very, very specific things, maybe about you. In the meantime, I challenge you to read the book of Revelation. It's the last book in the Bible. And you'll find it lines up exactly like what he just told us in this dream. In the meantime, as you read the book of Revelation, don't wait till next week. Get right with God. Get to know Him. He's so wonderful. God is such a wonderful person. He loves you. He has a purpose, 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 purpose for your life. Read the book. Come on back next week. Say a prayer to you.